Hi, my name is Dr. Velma Payne. I am a PhD postdoctoral fellow at the Department of Veterans Affairs. I am currently working at the Houston VA and the Michael E. DeBakey Medical Center in Houston, Texas. Today I'm going to speak with you about an article entitled Patient Initiated Second Opinions, Systematic Review of Characteristics and Impact on Diagnosis, Treatment and Satisfaction. This article will appear in an upcoming edition of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. My co-authors and I conducted a systematic review to determine the impact of patient-initiated second opinions on diagnosis, treatment, and patient satisfaction. We also wanted to determine characteristics of patients who commonly seek a second opinion and factors that motivate them to do so. We searched PubMed, Embase, Cochrane, and Academic One file databases to identify articles. We screened 1,342 abstracts and reviewed the full text of 41 articles. We identified 13 articles meeting our strict inclusion criteria, which was patients who initiated a second opinion. Seven of these 13 articles included data on clinical agreement between the initial and the second consultation, and 10 of these articles included data on patient characteristics, motivating factors, and satisfaction. We found that patients who seek second opinions were commonly women in their mid-50s. We found that factors that motivated them to seek a second opinion was dissatisfaction with the initial consultation. Patients wanted to confirm that the diagnosis they received was accurate. They wanted more information on their disease and they wanted to know all the treatment options available to them to determine if the treatment regimen suggested by the provider was best for them. Patients also um, sought a second opinion if they had persistent and critical side effects to treatment. Of the articles that reported clinical agreement data, they discussed three types of patients. Patients with cancer, these were commonly women who were recently diagnosed with breast cancer. Patients who were seeking a second opinion for elective surgery. These were commonly patients who had gynecological or orthopedic conditions. The third group was patients who had general medical concerns. These were patients either who had not received a diagnosis yet or had received the diagnosis several years ago, had undergone several different types of treatments for extended periods of time, but still did had no relief of their symptoms. In terms of the impact that second opinions have on clinical outcomes, we found that the articles reported varying data in this regard. Some articles reported that patients typically received a confirmation of their diagnosis or treatment, but other articles reported that between 10 and 62 percent of the patients received a major change in either their diagnosis, their treatment, or their prognosis. But of those patients, more patients re received different treatment advice than received a new diagnosis. We found that generally patients were more satisfied with the second opinion than they were with the first. They uh, determined that the second provider took more time with them, was more compassionate, explained their disease, explained their treatment options, and generally gave them more information. Patients in general found that second opinions were valuable. In terms of the impact of these findings on the practice of medicine, they reveal that patients can and often do seek a second opinion, that patients want more information from their providers. They want to know what all the treatment options available to them are. They also want a definitive diagnosis and they want to be assured that that diagnosis is correct. Given that a second opinion results in a change in diagnosis for a significant proportion of patients, we feel that second opinions is an avenue that could be used to reduce the diagnostic error rate, which is currently around 15%. In terms of future research, we feel that more research is needed on the impact and the validity of the second opinion. The articles that we assessed did not follow up with the patients after the second opinion. So we feel that more research is needed in terms of the impact and the validity of the second opinion and that can be done through follow-ups. We also feel that future research is needed to determine which patients would most benefit from a second opinion as well as which conditions should automatically trigger a second review. In pathology and radiology, second reviews are standard practice, and we feel there are other conditions that should result in an automatic second review, and future research is needed in this regard. The take-home messages for this article are that the literature on second opinions for initiated by patients is limited. Patients feel that second opinions are valuable. 
However, there are a lack of standardized methods in order to determine the uh, impact of the second opinion both on clinical outcomes and their potential to reduce diagnostic errors. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We hope you enjoy the article. If you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to contact us. Have a great day. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.